Because the theory here that I want to look at today is, um, can Bitcoin still find a four-year cycle low and will it still keep to that pattern right. with macro going the way it is? Now, Raul Paul had a pretty good, um, I think, like argument for this. He, would, he's, he actually argued Bitcoin's not in four-year cycles. It's actually following liquidity cycles mm. in the world liquidity flow of money, yeah. right? And as liquidity tightens, obviously all assets go down and as liquidity expands and there's more money and there's more credit flowing, obviously, you know, Bitcoin's going to go up and so is everything else. So um, I, I like that point of view as like another way to look at the market as a possibility. Um, but because of that, he's like, Bitcoin happens to go in four year cycles, not because of the halving, but because of that's the cycles that liquidity goes in. Right. So that could shift things up if you do take that point of view. But again, right, in crypto, it's always we have our four-year cycles. That's kind of the, the fallback that we look at. And then we play these we're around with these other ideas to see, okay, do we have a super cycle? Clearly we didn't, right? <laughs> do we have, you know, three hours capital, damn bad. Um, then we have other possibilities as well. So here we're just looking at the four-year cycle. We're looking at it as if, okay, if Bitcoin was in a, uh, what do you call it? In a... What's that thing when you're in space and it's just like... You mean, you mean when you're in space? A void? Not a void, but it's like... Um, vacuum? Vacuum, there we go. Yeah, so we're looking at Bitcoin in a vacuum just as itself, as it does for your cycles. Then we can talk about how the macro might affect it a little bit later. How about right. that? Yeah, yeah, sure, that's fine. All right, cool. So we're going to have to put some uh, drawings on the chart here and it's going to make things look a little funky in terms of the price action, but it is what it is. So... The last cycle low we had on the four-year cycle was uh, here, right, on uh, the week of December 10th, 2018. So we are past that week, right? We are on the 22nd uh, of uh, December this year. So we have already surpassed four years, right? So if we do, and I know it's going to get messy here in terms of that, right, we're 200 and uh, let's see, we're around the current week here. Oh, that's next week. Don't, there we go. 209, right? Um, bars here. And uh, so basically for a four-year cycle, we would uh, go to 208 would be four years, right? So we've already gotten a little bit beyond there. And so if we do hit a 60-day cycle low, let's say in mid-January, let's say the week of the 16th, it would be 213 uh, weeks uh, essentially here uh, over the course uh, of that cycle. So that's not too far off from that 208, 210 uh, area, right? So anywhere within there, basically is fine now if we didn't get the lows until let's say um april right let's say april 10th yeah that'd be 225 weeks i would say you could argue an extended four-year cycle at that point but it i think that's where it starts to get a little bit like okay macro is mainly on uh taking hold here and if we're still bearish on macro till then and bitcoin is still hitting new lows and hasn't started to uh at least uh become a little bit less correlated yeah if none of that has happened right then bitcoin could like i would say maybe you want to go towards the argument of what raul paul was saying there with liquidity so i would say until we have proven that the four-year cycles are not going to happen we will assume that they will but how, what ramification? Now, obviously, you you are the chart god. <laughs> but, yeah, I like them. Yeah, but but um, but in terms of like, what does that do psychologically? And and not even, I mean, not even psychologically. What does that do to a lot of yeah. like charting channels and stuff? Because it just kind of invalidates a lot of stuff. Right. Well, and charts are just another way that people look at the market, right? right. So charts reflect the psychology of the market, and then also back and forth is like kind of like a interesting feedback loop, yeah. right? And so with um if we start kind of messing up what we got for cycles with the bitcoin having right right what which is basically we have every four years we have a low and then we have a having about one year one year and a half after that and then that gets the bull market going and yep. then about three years into the new cycle we make new highs and then we hit a bear market at the end of the four years and we start all over again right so if that cycle gets interrupted then essentially i think this is where two things happen one the incumbents the people who've been there a long time like us right we have to be willing to open ourselves up to a new pattern where most people i would say the majority of people aren't and since they aren't able to think about a new pattern right they're going to misplay the market right and this gives an advantage to the new players because the new players have less of a bias and so when the new players have a less of a bias right they if they find that pattern if they recognize that pattern faster 
they will have an edge over the incumbents. And so it actually levels the playing field a little bit when you start getting, um, you know, things uh, changing from expectations. Got it. You know, I would say that would be true with or without the charts. It doesn't matter about the charts. It's just, you know, psychologically, people think about these prices, whether they see it or not, just visually, um, they tend to be able to, like, uh, what do you call it, look, see certain patterns when they see it, right? So um, that's what we got there. So again, um, we're getting, we're basically on the end of that four-year cycle. So we didn't hit it the last 60-day cycle. We didn't hit the 60-day cycle. If we don't hit it, or sorry, we didn't, we haven't hit it yet, the 60-day cycle, because we're still in it. I would say if it's, I would not expect it anywhere beyond the next 60-day cycle. If it if it did happen beyond there, I would say it's going to, uh, you want to start to look at the pattern differently. So just in terms of like what date that would be, that would be specifically around, yeah, the end of March. So I would say if we do, if lows continue sliding into April, right, like late into April, that's where I'm like, okay, the four-year cycle argument might be starting to be invalidated. Um, but I would say, yeah, the next two end of 60-day cycles, mid-January and mid-March, essentially have shots at uh, still, I think, holding that, that theory up. Yeah. 